Hi, I'm Jeff from Home Renovation DIY, and today we are going to be sharing the secret how to soundproof between floors. Now, the thing about it is today, more and more the trend is people staying at home to work. And what you're going to find is when you try to stay home and work, life is going to be very inconvenient. There are so many challenges when you're trying to keep a place quiet. Now, you might have bought a house or renovated your room and you've got an office now, but the reality is that in residential construction, there is no building code with residential units unless you've got a renter living in the house with you. So today we're going to talk about all the challenges you face, the traditional approaches to soundproofing your room, and at the end of this video I'm going to share with you a secret that's going to blow your mind, save you a ton of money, and you can do it yourself. Let's get started. So today's world we have brand new construction and it seems like materials are getting lighter and lighter and the buildings are being made faster and faster. The truth is the when it comes to soundproofing, there is no residential building code. Your new house builder has no rules to follow with keeping things quiet from room to room unless you have a shared wall with another unit like a row house or you have an apartment in your basement or a nanny suite, then those walls have to be separated or that ceiling has to be separated. Now, in the world of soundproofing, there really are three classifications of people I think have real serious needs. One of them is they want to have a theater room. And if that's the case, then traditionally you've got to soundproof and create a cocoon around that whole room. And that's very involved. The second one is people that are working shift work. And what you need to do is soundproof the room that you're sleeping in so that you can sleep through the daytime and, and get rid of all those distractions that come along with living in a neighborhood, people going to school and the traffic of the street noise. But the third one is people that are trying to work at home. Now, if you work at home and you've got an office, it's either upstairs or downstairs, you will have no soundproofing between the floors and between the walls. So, in this video we're going to talk about the traditional ways of soundproof for that specific situation. And anybody else, if you're entertaining and your kids are upstairs, maybe you've got a game room upstairs, and you want to create that soundproof area, we're going to talk about all the tips and tricks in the trade today, traditional, and then the secret that's going to absolutely revolutionize your life. You're going to love this. So before we get into it, I'm going to go back a trip in time. Let's talk about new houses versus old houses, because if you've ever been in an old house, maybe 1800s or early 1900s, back in the days of lath and plaster, you will notice that there is a significant difference in the amount of sound transfer that goes from one room to the next, both in the floors from up and down and through the walls. And that's because density of material. Homes used to be built like this one, it's an 1880. Now the floor above me, that is one inch of solid wood tongue and groove floorboard, okay? This bad boy, it transfers a really small amount of noise from upstairs in conversation, but it really has a problem with impact noise. Now one of the benefits of an old house with the room to room sound transfer is you have wooden lath and then three coats of plaster on both sides of the wall. It is a lot of material and it eats up a lot of sound. Now if you're renovating an old house, the first thing you're going to want to do is get rid of all that lath and plaster and put on drywall. You're right back to a brand new construction because you're only going to have half inch drywall between each wall. You're going to find that your, your house is going to get a lot noisier than it used to be. So pay attention to this concept. If you're renovating an old home, you're going to want to take into account your, your desire for sound transmission from room to room, formal dining and living room spaces versus where the kids are going to be hanging out and so forth. But now let's just talk about what's being sold today. If you're buying a new house, you're going to have floor joists that are engineered and they're going to be made of particle board and a little bit of lumber. You're going to have this 5 8 OSB plywood in between your floors. That's about as thin as it can get to meet the standard of people not falling through the floor. Okay, that's what they're giving you. And then you're going to have upstairs, you're going to have options for flooring. You're going to have maybe carpet, which is nice because carpet and under pad actually eats a lot of sound. But today people have got so many allergies that they're not looking for a carpet surface in a lot of cases. They want a hard surface. But most people are going to laminate or even vinyl. Now a luxury vinyl, although vinyl sounds like a soft product, it's made with a solid core in a lot of cases and it actually has an impact noise. So if you have one of those two floating floor options or you're planning on upgrading, you're going to have a lot of noise being transferred from floor to floor. New houses do nothing to stop the noise transfer, especially through walls. We all have heard the stories. We all know what it's like, right? If someone goes to the bathroom just down the hall off the kitchen. It's the guest bathroom. The guest bathroom doesn't even have any soundproofing in it. And it can quite <laughs> literally be an awkward moment, 
So the reality is this, if you were going to have a rental unit, there's a different coat. All of a sudden we care about noise transfer because we're talking about one family to the next. You can build a house really cheap and a family can learn how to deal with the noises and manage their time and all that sort of thing, but you can't manage your neighbors. And if you have neighbors living beneath you or above you, you want to have a soundproof layer. So traditionally everybody stuffs it full of insulation like they sell on TV, you know, two layers of expensive mineral wool and then two layers of drywall, all kinds of other bells and whistles. And it's generally disappointing because what they're doing is they're meeting minimum code for sound transmission in a rental unit, which really only deals with this. Minimum code means if someone's talking above you, you hear them, but you can't make out what they're saying. It all sounds French, right? That's not good enough. That's not privacy. That's not soundproofing. Whew. So what I'm going to share today is the actual soundproofing techniques, some of the technology, some of the terms, some of the products, and then I'm going to share with you my secret for getting rid of sound transmission from floor to floor so that you can have a nice, quiet, peaceful life. So for those of you who don't know, the building code has something called the STC rating, which is just basically sound transmission classification. And what it does is it sets up a different assemblies, which means studs, insulation, drywall, different building materials, and how quiet that is as far as noise going from one room to the next or from a floor through a ceiling. Generally speaking, it's basically dealing with conversation. Remember, the building code is not about soundproofing. It's just about lowering out the amount of volume or the amount of clarity in a conversation so that you can have official privacy, but it's still irritating as all get out. Now, one of the things that there, well, that's one, let's talk about all three. Three kinds of noise you're gonna get, right? Conversation, building code addresses that. Impact noises, the building code doesn't address that. And air movement and building code in most cases is way behind the times. As long as you put plastic on your wall, you're gonna meet code in most jurisdictions. Some places are gonna require um, a sealant at the bottom and the top plate to reduce the air. But when it comes to being a professional in the, in the air transmission sound proofing business, there are a lot of upgrades that need to happen. We put putty on the back of our electrical boxes. We go through great extent. We use soundproofing, caulking underneath our drywall at the floor. There are a lot of things that we do to make sure things stay nice and quiet, including this. Now here's part of a traditional assembly. And generally it's called a hat channel. And what we do is we put these soundproof clips on here. And what that does is this is screwed to the floor joist. And this clips onto the track. Okay. And it does it pretty easily. When I'm installing them, I like to put all the clips on first. Then I can flip it up and then screw them in. And what it does is it minimizes the surface area that's making contact. And it reduces it just to this one spot <coughs> right here. Okay. That one spot is the only place where there's actual transmission of material to material. And on the other side of that, there's this thick rubber pad. Now these are actually really good quality. I went to my drywall store just the other day to buy clips. They didn't even have this pad on it. So it didn't have like a, a mass area here to kill the sound. By the time you're done with your assembly and your insulation, your two layers of drywall, not to mention this stuff, right? This is green glue. Brilliant. Everybody loves the idea. Well, we can throw caulking on our drywall, sandwich it between two layers. Two tubes for every four by eight sheet of drywall. It's $40 of green glue plus two layers of 5 8 drywall. You're at $70 in material for every four by eight sheet of drywall and you haven't paid anybody to install it. You haven't done the insulation yet. You haven't put up the tracks and the clips. It's 15 to 20 bucks a square foot to soundproof a floor properly using traditional materials and methods. Now, if that's the only option you got, great. But I'm here to tell you, there's a simpler and cheaper way. If you're like most people, and you want to stop sound transmission from upstairs onto the main floor, understand this, that most of the noise that's going to come from upstairs is going to be people walking and people talking. All right? And you can stop that by changing your flooring. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but just think about it for a minute. You're going to have carpet in a new home construction. You're going to have old floors in an old house. If it's really that much of an issue, the floor or the room that's above your office, if you just went upstairs and removed the flooring and changed your floor into something that was more soundproof, it would solve your problem so effectively. 
So now we're going to introduce the material that's going to save your life here. It's called mass loaded vinyl. Hey Mitch. Yeah. Can you roll your chair just for a second? Thank you. I mean, the very fact that I can have a conversation with my wife through a one inch of solid wood, I mean, that, doesn't that just tell you everything you need to know? Now listen, if you're going to want to soundproof your upstairs to your downstairs, th think about this. Don't be disillusioned thinking that if you put a little bit of insulation in your ceiling and cover it up, that it's going to work. You're going to be disappointed, all right? Two layers of rock sole and a drywall over top of that is not going to solve your problem. Don't buy into the hype. People are being paid a lot of money to tell you that, and it's just not true. And they can say that because it's above minimum code, but it will not solve your problem. So what you want to do is you want to go into that room upstairs, take off the baseboard, take out your flooring, only takes a few minutes, and then you want to, you're going to see something like this, aspenite. Then you want to take your roll of mass vinyl, you want to just roll it out, right across the room. Now this stuff here is only one eighth thick. It's one pound per square foot. And when you're on the sites and you're looking to buy it, that's the, generally the rating you want to go by. One or two pound. The quieter, the heavier. So if you want to get the two pound mass vinyl, that's your best option. I would suggest maybe buy it in a 25 foot roll because it's going to be 200 pounds. Right? You can buy it in smaller quantities on the roll so it can fit your needs. If you're going to be alone and you got to carry it, you can get it in smaller sections. You can get it in 10 foot rolls as well. But remember, the bigger the roll, the cheaper it is. So you might want to plan on having a helper around. But if you roll one of these out for a dollar a square foot, 15 to 20, one dollar a square foot, then you go out and you buy yourself some new vinyl tile and you put that on top of this, okay? For four dollars a square foot, you can do it yourself. You don't have to hire a pro. You just put new floor in, put the trim on, watch our videos related to that, and you have a problem solved, right? So if you have a room that's uh, 12 by 12, and it's 144 square feet, boom, right? For three, four hundred dollars in material, one day on a Saturday, you can soundproof the transmission from one room to the next. Now, if that's not an option, then you're gonna to wanna to just click this video right here because that'll show you all the in-depth secret for soundproofing a ceiling the traditional way. And you can still do that yourself. Don't forget to follow the link in the description below and you can get 10% off at Trademark Soundproofing. We set that up for you as our viewer to help you out. Thanks for joining us.